Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. We have 3 sine of x minus 4 cosine of x equals 2, and we are, we are supposed to find tangent x. So I'll be presenting two methods here. Let's start with the first one. Now the first method involves squaring both sides. Let's go ahead and do that. This gives us 9 sine squared x minus 3 times 4 is 12, so double that, 24 sine x cosine x plus 16 cosine squared x equals 4. Now, at this point, you can do a couple different things, such as replacing cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared, so on and so forth. But I'll follow a slightly different approach for the first one. I will divide both sides by cosine squared. But first, I got to make sure that cosine x cannot be 0. If you plug in cosine x equals 0 in the original one, you get sine x equals 2 thirds, but that doesn't satisfy the Pythagorean identity, so it's impossible. So cosine x does not equal 0, we know that. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by cosine squared x. And when we do, we're going to get the following. 9 sine squared x divided by cosine squared x minus 24 sine x cosine x divided by cosine squared x plus 16 equals 4 over cosine squared x. Now, you might be asking, like, why do we divide by cosine squared x? Because we can, but that's not the reason. We do it because it's going to give us a nicer equation. You'll see in a little bit. We'll use some identities here, so bear with me. Hopefully you are familiar with the identities. If you're not, I'm going to tell you what they are. So sine squared over cosine squared is equal to tangent squared, so let's write it that way. 9 tangent squared x. Here, cosine, one of the cosines will cancel out with this one, and that gives us sine x over cosine x, which is tangent x, so this gives us 24 tangent x. This is actually the very reason we divide both sides by cosine squared x, because we get a quadratic equation in tangent. But on the right hand side, we do get 1 over cosine squared x, which is equivalent to secant squared x. Now, what am I going to do with that? Well, I can replace secant squared with 1 plus tangent squared. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's set tangent x equals t because it's easier with substitution and write it this way. 9t squared minus 24t plus 16, and I'm going to replace secant squared with 1 plus tangent squared, which I can write as 1 plus t squared. Now let's go ahead and distribute everything. From here, I'll be getting 4 plus 4t squared. If you subtract 4t squared, you get 5t squared, and then minus 24t. Now here, 16 minus 4 is going to give us positive 12. So this is going to be my quadratic equation in t or tangent x. Let's go ahead and solve it using the quadratic formula. You could also be looking for possible ways to factor it, but I don't think it's factorable. So, and also this is nice. I forgot to mention that when we divide both sides by cosine squared, we get a quadratic equation in tangent x. And guess what? We are looking for tangent x. So that makes sense, right? Great. So let's go ahead and do it. So from here, if you use the quadratic formula, t equals tangent x, and that is equal to negative b, which is 24, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 24 squared, minus 4 times 5 times 12. All right, so let me go ahead and simplify, and that's going to be divided by 2 times a, which is 10. Let's go ahead and simplify the discriminant first, and then we can just go ahead and plug it in. So that our delta, or discriminant, is going to be 24 squared minus uh, 4 times 5 times 12. So here's what I can do. I can write the 24 as 24 times 24. Let's go ahead and do that. And then minus. So I got like a 4 times 12, which is 48. So I can write that as 2 times 24. And then I have an extra 5. Great. Now I can plot a 24 here. And let's see what happens. This is going to give me 24 times 24 minus 10. And that is equal to 24 minus 14. Now let's go ahead and factor this into perfect squares. This is going to be 4 times 6, right? 4 is a perfect square. And from here, we're going to get 2 times 7. But guess what? We can also make another perfect square from here, which is 12. So it's going to give us 4 times 4 times 3 times 7, or 16 times 21. Basically, I just factored it. So our discriminant is 16 times 21. So when I take the square root, it's going to look like the following. I'll be taking the square root. So my tangent x value, oopsies, my tangent x value, which is equal to t here, 
can be written as negative b was 24 plus minus if you take the square root of this expression you're going to get 4 times the square root of 21 and then that's going to be divided by 10 okay so that's my expression but it can be simplified and this gives us two values so tangent x is either 12 plus 2 root 21 over 5 or tangent x can be written as 12 minus 2 root 21 over 5. Now obviously these values need to be checked but let me tell you that they do verify. The reason why we check is because we squared both sides so that could introduce extraneous solutions. So let's go ahead and talk about the second method now. So here's our second method. Our second method involves some interesting transformations. So let's take a look at the original problem one more time. We have 3 sine x minus 4 cosine x. 3 sine x minus 4 cosine x equals 2. So here's what I like to do. I, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. The reason why we, we do that is if you look at the coefficients of sine x and cosine x, they are 3 and 4. So I'm using the Pythagorean theorem here. And um, it's basically like a 3, 4, 5 triangle that I'm going to be using. And you'll see in a little bit why this is helpful. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by 5. And this gives us the following. 3 over 5 sine x minus 4 over 5 cosine x equals 2 over 5. Great. Now, here's what I'd like to do. And this is a really slick, really neat substitution that we use for these kinds of expressions. By the way, if you have something like 3 sine x minus 4 cosine x, let me tell you something. The maximum value that this can take is 5. You can find that from the coefficients and there's a way to prove it and this is what it is. So now I'm going to replace these numbers and notice that they're special because of the 3, 4, 5 triangle. There are sines and cosines of the same angle. So I can just replace uh, 3 over 5 with cosine alpha, alpha being an acute angle, by the way, because both sine and cosine are positive, and 4 over 5 is going to be the sine alpha value. So this gives us something like this, sine x cosine alpha minus sine alpha cosine x. And definitely, this is something you should be familiar with if you're dealing with trigonometry. This is equal to sine x minus alpha equals 2 over 5. Now, in this case, I'm going to be using the tangent value. So here's what I'd like to do. Well, even though I got one sine value, this might give us two tangent values. Why? Because uh, x minus alpha can be in any quadrant. We know that alpha is acute, but we don't know anything about x. And x minus alpha could be a whole different story. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be finding the um, tangent values from here. Let me go ahead and draw a triangle which satisfies two fits and this is going to give you 25 minus 4 which is the square root of 21 that's where our we get the square root of 21 from but anyways from here tangent x minus alpha can be plus minus plus minus 2 over root 21 and we're going to be using both of the values but guess what we also have a tangent x value if you look at the original problem we did get a value but here's the thing we divided both sides by 5, right? We got this equation, but that, that also gave us something else. We get we can get the tangent alpha from here. How? Well, we do know sine alpha and cosine alpha, and finding tangent alpha would actually be a piece of cake. It's sine alpha or cosine alpha, which would be 4 over 3 in this case. Okay, great. So I got these two values, and this becomes a system of equations in trigonometry. And it's easiest to solve because of the tangent. So here's what I can do. And remember, our goal is to find tangent x. So here's what, how we're going to proceed. I'm going to write tangent x as tangent of x minus alpha plus alpha, right? Alpha cancels out and we end up with tangent x. Awesome. So you can call this beta if you want. So we're kind of looking at the sum formula for tangent. So something like tangent beta plus alpha. And there's a formula for that. So let's write it down. This is equivalent to tangent beta, which is tangent x minus alpha plus tangent alpha divided by 1 minus tangent x minus alpha times tangent alpha. Here, I'm just using the formula tangent beta plus alpha, which is tangent beta plus tangent alpha divided by 1 minus tangent beta times tangent alpha. Okay. Now, since we have two different values for tangent x minus alpha, we're going to plug it in and 
find the two different values. I'm going to leave it as an exercise for the reader. I hope you don't mind. In the interest of time, you don't want to, I don't want to keep this video too long. And it's very easy to do. You can just plug it in. And guess what? You're going to be getting the same values that we have received before. And these are the two tangent x values that we're going to be getting for this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.